There is no injustice anywhere in the universe. Do you believe that? Do you really believe and accept that? The masters have told us that this is God's law, but for many people, that is way beyond their comprehension, especially when you look around and see all the seeming injustice in the world today. Murders, murders, rapes, child trafficking, child deaths, unexpected deaths, wars, you name it, abortion, on and on. And even more particularly, when it some tragedy befalls us or our family or those in our immediate circle. So how do we reconcile all of this with the statement that there is no injustice anywhere in the world? Beloved Portia, who we know, of course, is the goddess of justice, and she maintains that, that divine office for the evolutions of Earth. She says, remember, beloved, God has said there is no injustice anywhere in the universe. Therefore, beware. Do not resent God. Do not resent his justice. For God knows his ways and he knows your ways. Therefore, do not rail against God when you are dealt a bad hand. In reality, there is no injustice anywhere in the universe. But in the consciousness that has not become wholly real, there is an attitude of injustice which impairs the universal plan. Injustice impairs the universal plan. Padma Sambhava says that people do not really understand how justice is meted out. He says crimes are being committed all over the world in the name of justice. People want justice, and yet they do not understand how justice is meted out. Justice is meted out portion by portion by the beloved Lady Master Portia together with Saint Germain. Often it's meted out only through the violet flame as mercy's resolution of the injustices of the world. For the victims of injustice, now listen, the victims of injustice have no other recourse but the violet flame. And this tells us mm -hmm. the only freedom is through transmutation. He continues, let there be an understanding of justice and the true and righteous judgments of the Lord, beloved. We judge not. Every man is his own judge. For when he sees the record of his life stream, he cannot deny his own injustices. The Holy Christ self of each one sits in the seat of judgment as the advocate of the soul. Yet it's the soul who stands before the bar, that is, before the Lords of Karma. And in conjunction with their verdict, she, her, the soul, herself declares the rightness or wrongness of her cause. So we are our own judge with our Holy Christ selves sitting there as our advocate. Padma Sambhava continues. He says, remember the words of the Apostle Paul, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Trust in divine justice and be not dismayed before the passing scenes of injustice. Do not be dismayed before the passing scenes of injustice. Is there true justice in the earth, beloved? Indeed there is, but it's sparse. For if people do not carry the flame of justice in their hearts, how can they apply the rules of justice in their courts, in their judicial systems, in their daily lives, in their governments, in their households? It's up to the father and the mother to set the example for the child of what is justice and what is mercy, what is correct and what is incorrect as a standard of moral conduct. When parents do this, they will open the way for all people to be enlightened. Let them come to an awareness that there is an everlasting life and that karma descends, not according to man's time or the judgments of juries, but according to God's time and God's judgments. God's time and God's judgments, beloved. So he's telling us, and we see now the real importance, which we've always known, but now it's really solidified, the family structure and how important it is for those incoming souls to understand God's justice, 
God's freedom, God's mercy, so that they can then break the cycles of karma that they may have an encounter in this life, balancing that karma. The messenger, Elizabeth Clare Prophet said, the law of karma operates automatically and without justice, excuse me, without prejudice. This is why there is no injustice. We think that some people get away with everything while we get away with nothing. That makes us chafe at the bit and wonder if there is a just God. We simply have to be at peace and remember the teaching from Deuteronomy that Paul referred to. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, it's ours to forgive. God will mete out his justice, and we certainly do not wish harm upon anyone, even those who are our self-styled enemies. We know that karma functions on an individual as well as on a group level. There is then such a thing as personal karma, something very personal, for instance, between you and me alone. It functions one-on-one. -on -one. And then there is group karma, entire nations or towns or families have made karma because of their stand against life. They commit acts together as one body, and therefore they must re-embody together. The mafia families, for instance, come back together again and again because of their karma. It has been said, and it is true, that America is Atlantis come again, that most of us lived on Atlantis and are here to make right those things that we didn't do right and to have our victory. My mother has commented that she and Mark were on Atlantis also, and that they went down when it sank. So here we are, all back again. She says, Atlantis was a teeming continent with great advances in science and technology. Many of our scientists have brought back the same inventions that they patented on Atlantis. And we can see that we are at the precipice right here and now. How are we going to use this technological advances that we are coming forth from Atlantis? And particularly, of course, artificial intelligence, which is a, a big thing right now. Will it be used for, by the light bearers for the victory of the planet or by the fallen ones for the demise of the planet? In 1990, St. Germain gave us a message regarding our individual karma. Very important. He says, my beloved Portia has sponsored the intensifying flame of divine justice in the earth. Divine justice that requires, above all, that the light bearers settle their accounts with all, with everyone at all levels and in all octaves, not just here on the earth, all levels, all octaves. He says, the closer you come, therefore, to the age of Aquarius, of cosmic freedom and justice in the earth, the closer you come to the antithesis of both. And therefore, all injustice is karma, and karma is always injustice. And the forces of freedom, anti-freedom, are at an all-time high in the earth. Without the understanding of karmic law, how can we understand cosmic justice. From very early on on the path, once I understood this law, I made a determination, and it served me well through my life, and I'm sure it will continue to serve me well. But I decided anything that's coming to me negative that I perceive as negative in some experience, I either deserve it or I requested it. Deserve it meaning the return of my karma. I have to deal with it, master it, transmute it, move on. Or I requested it, meaning I was asking God for some great quality or some acceleration on the path. And so he gives me the initiation so that I can pass it. So that has served me well, as I said, through my entire life and through some very challenging situations. Is it always easy? No, because we have big things and then we also have small initiations and both require the same commitment to mastery. The Ascended Lady Master Magda gives us some examples of how relatively minor situations can be a major test. She says, many diamonds, many diamonds will you pluck in the way. Many diamonds will you mine from your own true being and bring them forth and fashion a crown. And when you place it upon the head of your Christ self, 
you will find that your Christ self will place that crown upon your soul. If you truly have completed the goal of understanding the mantra of this line, there is no injustice anywhere in the universe. Think on this, hold to it, for it will see you through every difficulty and seeming inequity when something says, you've been deprived, you've been cheated, you've been wrong, you've been offended, you've been sinned against. Now react, now take your stand, now defend your ego, your pride, now defend your dignity. And thus you see, Many a karmic note, a discordant note, has been struck thereby to increase the levels of the electronic bell by those who would not say die to the preference of the self. One day, sometime, somewhere, each one must let go of the self-preserving self that would assert itself, the justifying, the explanations, on and on. No doubt we can all relate to what she is describing. When I was being interviewed on a podcast and I was talking about the spiritual perspectives on abortion and how the soul, the whole life is planned, laid out, everybody that's coming together, the best opportunity to balance the karma, fulfill the mission, all those things. And then how it is all interrupted when the uh, body is aborted. And it was interesting because the interviewer said, Maybe the abortion was part of the plan. Valid question, is it not? If you really believe there's no injustice in the universe, then you have to concede at least that the question's valid. Well, Zarathustra sheds some light on this for us. He says, the law governing compensation and justice from a cosmic standpoint has been little understood in either the Occident or the Orient. As a group, men do not seem to recognize the role they play in weaving the strands of their own destiny. Re-embodiment is understood in part and denied by those whose dogma denies it and whose sense is real at the infinite possibilities inherent within its concepts. Yet again and again, people meet those they have known in the past with whom they have debts and credits which remain to be balanced according to divine justice. And in these encounters, there is a mutual realization of some old familiarity. Sometimes feuds are reopened based on a vengeance which was not satisfied. These blessed people do not see that they are beating their heads against a stone wall, for justice never permits anyone to harm another with impunity. Let the law of pure love wipe out all such matters and set the earth free from the shame of perpetual discord. In other words, the karmic cycle must be broken at some time because you he could kill her and next life she kills him and on and on and you're caught in this karmic cycle and you're never free there's always injustice so he's saying love is the key making a different decision when faced with that same initiation and when you come in like he said with these feuds and vengeance making a change, breaking the, the perpetual discord that comes lifetime after lifetime. You know, incidentally, my response to the interviewer who said that maybe abortion is part of the plan was that then another karma, a new karma or reinforcement of karma is established and the karmic cycle was not broken. Now, Portia, Portia, who understands the challenges we face in this dimension, she gives a beautiful tribute to those who have kept the faith under difficult circumstances, and she gives us some important teaching. She says, seeing the occasional passing from the screen of life of the children and the young, men ponder on the apparent brevities of the phenomena they call life. At such times, they may lose their perspectives and their grief, wrongly sensing the pull of the unknown as a shroud to swallow them. Whereas in reality, this transition is but an action and an outpicturing of the karmic law itself, which is always just and entirely free of retribution and intent. 
Many times those who leave the stage of life quite suddenly are in reality spared from much grief and are thus called to higher courts in order to obtain necessary training and preparation for a much greater opportunity whereby they may eventually wear a new and strong physical form in an era of advancing hope. Another perspective for sure. Therefore, in truth, so-called death is often a doorway into greater life, wherein the individual will not be only relieved from a sea of troubles, but will be given, while awaiting a re-embodiment, that inner training which either religious or other forms of prejudice would not allow them to take during their life on earth. And he says, the proof of the efficacy of our training and the teachings upon these disciples, dear ones, is so often found in the mounting spiral of attainment, which subsequently comes to them during a renewed opportunity. This is truly an example of how the greater law is at work that we may not understand when things are happening. In 1984, when my brother was 39 years old, he was brutally murdered by his ex-business partner, who also he considered to be his best friend. It was a very great shock to our family. And I was making calls and wondering, you know, why this happened, what, what's going on. And I was given a picture of him and, and this man when they were uh, partners and, and working together. And as I picked it up, I clearly heard, this is karma, don't touch it. I took this to mean that I was supposed to make the calls for his soul. I was to make the calls for the transmutation of the record and the karma and leave the rest up to God. We also understand energy and the law of attraction and how it plays into what we attract to ourselves. Beloved Lanto comments on this. He says, energy fields are magnificent when they are properly qualified. For they not only surround the creator of the energy field with his own vibration of bliss, but according to the law of attraction, they also magnetize the vibrations of happiness and joy for many parts of the world. We acknowledge that the reverse is also true, and seldom do people take into account the fact that from time to time they are surrounded with entities, entities of fear, of doubt, and of grief, which seek to invade the aura only because by their own attitudes, individuals create the climate that attracts these outsiders. The law of attraction is powerful. We know that what we put out to the universe is the signal, send me more, send me more of the same vibration. Portia, as we know, is also a member of the karmic board, tells us that there are limitations in both the physical and heavenly world. She says it's well to listen to my beloved Saint Germain, for what he does tell you is that you must understand that those in embodiment and those that are ascended are subject to certain limitations. And this is something not all are able to deal with or to accept. For you know the limitless of your mighty I am presence, or you think you do. You know the infinite power of God, or you think you do. But then you wonder, why God does not step forth and prevent the death of a child or a calamity. Why the I am presence does not step forth to intercede. You begin to understand that there are limitations. As above, so below. And these limitations are built in. It is the law, beloved. It's the cosmic law. It's the karmic law. It's the law of each individual manifestation of God. Therefore, the lords of karma are bound by that law and may not intercede when an individual's free will or karma dictates that the lessons of life must be learned in a certain manner. For sometimes, sometimes it's the case that that one has been given a thousand, ten thousand, or a million opportunities to learn by a teaching of the Buddha, to learn by the love of the mother. And in the face of that teaching and that love, that one has refused to bend the knee before his own God presence or to obey the law. The law had no bite, and therefore, when all attempts to teach by these means have been exhausted, it does become necessary to allow some to experience losses and grief and pain, that thereby in those experiences, they may learn the higher way and the higher walk. 
There comes a time, therefore, when people's free will must be their only God, when their karma is the only law that can apply, when mercy has been exhausted, when those examples of the great avatars have come again and again, and their words have not been heeded, nor their example followed. So you understand, beloved, there does come a time when intercession is no longer possible. This law affects all people at the time of their passing. Life can no longer be extended, for they have lived out their allotment for this embodiment given to them according to the law of grace and mercy, balanced by the law of their own karma. And therefore, sometime, somewhere, opportunity in this octave comes to a close, even though the individual may not have balanced 51% of his karma. I ask you to begin to understand that though some people think they are in control of their lives, their futures, their nations, or their destiny, this concept lasts only until the force of karma, known as the car of juggernaut, does descend. For in that hour and that moment, the clock does strike for them. These teachings may be hard to hear, but on another level, they are very encouraging as it helps us to understand the great working of the law. Let us also take a look at the master's advice on how justice is to be administered in our physical world. And we'll begin with a message from the goddess of liberty, who is the spokesperson for the karmic board. She actually gives us a warning. She says, do not fight the battles of the Nephilim. Do not allow yourself to be enlisted in their armies, defending their interests, their money, or their enterprise, nor their schemes of power and dominion. Do not allow yourself to become fodder in the mills which they grind, grinding out not cosmic justice, but actually extracting the light from the very living bodies of the true souls of Sanat Kumara. In order for transition to take place and the light bearers to be separated out from these fallen ones, there must be a very intense discipline day by day. For you see, my beloved, as emotions run and intensify, is there a great gathering of individuals around seemingly right concepts, which in fact are wrong concepts, there can be the breakdown even of this society and of other nations carried out by well-meaning children of God who themselves are wanting in the total perspective the solution to today's problems. Do we not see this going on in the world today? It's almost like there's a pall over people of the nation and they just do not see reality. Therefore, let us take the first things first. Let the Emmanuel as the birth of the man-child within your heart become a living reality as the most important and monumental event that a planet can experience. Let the birth of Christ in you be the goal of your revolution. And then let the goal of life be for you to raise up that Christ in all other children of God. Then we will see how from that exalted view of life the multitudes will rise to the very presence of the Son of God and take dominion over all the earth. We warn you then of the consequences of allowing yourself to experience the very hatred that is being hurled from one side of the planet to the other and in some people's back own backyards. We warn you lest you should take sides and we advise that you stand always on the rock of Christ and the principle of truth and integrity and justice. So we see again how if as we become the Christ, we lift the planet. And as we give our judgment calls, we must maintain that Christ-centered consciousness. We cannot allow ourselves, whether we're giving judgment calls or otherwise, to get into the anger, the fear, the hatred, or any other negative vibration as a result of what we see parading before us in this world at this time. We must check ourselves so that we consciously choose to be at that level of the Christ as we dispense God's judgment. Now we also know that justice is opportunity and it's balanced also by mercy, all qualities of the seventh ray. We also know that there's a difference between granting mercy and sympathizing with the perpetrator. Lanto has a most important message regarding this. 
He says, why, beloved hearts, children of the light, take up the cause of murderers, even of those who would assassinate their leaders? They defend them on the basis of their insanity, that they're not competent. But beloved hearts, the first step of insanity was the leaving off of the worship of God, the denial of his name. Whether or not they are insane has not to do with justice. For divine justice, hand in hand with mercy, decrees that those who are a danger to society, no matter what the reason, must be removed. It is mercy to the people of light. It is justice to them to remove from society those who will rape and kill and destroy and commit those atrocities which cause the opening of the astral plane and the coming forth of the most terrible manifestations of demons in these last days. Therefore, beloved ones, a crime must be judged and the sentence given based upon the action of the individual, whether that action is taken in demon possession, in insanity, or so-called in the very right mind of the person. The fact remains that the deed has been done. Someone has suffered and the individual has committed the crime, has revealed himself to be irresponsible, totally irresponsible, and totally capable of committing the same crime or worse again. For what measure ye meet, it shall be meted out unto you again. Therefore, let those entrusted with the law of God, even descended from Noah, take their stand for greater and greater manifestations of justice meted out by the sons of God in embodiment, by the law itself, which is the embodiment of the word. And then he says, this is the only true correction of the increase of crime in the United States. Though many other measures may be taken, programs of education, programs of welfare, or gun control, or other laws, you must realize that the very bottom line of dealing with this is justice itself. As you know from the great divine director, and maybe you don't know this, but the karmic board approves of the death penalty, for it represents a lesson to souls that if they continue to take life, life will be taken from them. It teaches them that the end of the road of their activity is the second death. And by losing that physical life and being reborn again, they have the deepest record in their soul to reinforce in them the will to resist the marauding entities of evil that take over their temples to destroy life. Beloved hearts, ultimately they will be judged and ultimately they must face the ultimate penalty of the second death. Therefore, let compassion on earth be the concern that when souls have been the instruments of darkness to take the life of others, their lives themselves must be forfeited. These lessons are then well learned. And in the days when the law was in the hands of those who swiftly needed out justice, Murderers then being sentenced immediately by the will of the people and the will of those in power. We have seen the record. This is the record now of those that were immediately uh, held accountable. We've seen the record that time and again, they have re-embodied, repented of their ways and gone on to attain the glory of God. But those who are allowed to continue in society, living out their lives for decades, becoming more and more possessed, more and more integrated with the spirals of hell, these beloved hearts return to embodiment without any sense of chastisement or of the penalty of murder itself. And therefore they kill and kill again. And ultimately their souls are not saved. Let those of you who realize what a threat, what is occurring in America today to this very activity, to the messenger, to you as an individual light bearer, Take up the cause of moving for more and more penalties written in the books enacted by the state legislatures so that crime may be dealt with and swiftly. And those crimes committed against men and women ought to be seen as a threat to their own soul and the threat to the continuation of society as it is today. And of course, we do see this happening, unfortunately, on a much bigger scale in our nation than it should be happening. Therefore, our concern, concern remains that the understanding of the fallen ones and of the karma of their own that they have put upon the children of the light be transmitted to a widening circle of individuals. Go then to those who have some understanding of karma or of reincarnation or of Earth's ages. Go to those who are receptive 
and teach them the teachings that have been given to you. I personally recommend your hearing of that very key lecture, Planet Earth, the future is to the gods. It is more important you realize for you who already have the understanding. For those who do not, it is the key to the age. It is the key to every other understanding in their own religion. For every avatar has come with a teaching on light and darkness and the fallen ones and the warfare in heaven and Armageddon. Yet none has revealed the story of the Nephilim as it has been revealed by our dispensation in these decades. Now, for your information, I found that the lecture, Planet Earth, the Future is to the Gods, is available on YouTube in three segments. So you actually can go and listen to that. He continues, hearts kindled with fire. I am on fire for the word. And I tell you that the earth will accelerate as you could not even expect it to do if there can be transmitted this wisdom and this understanding that the children of the light need not defend by sympathy, by a misinterpretation of the teachings of Jesus Christ, these betrayers of the word. As long as citizens are fighting for life for those who have taken life, as long as they feel sorry for those who are the very destroyers of society, they give their light of their own heart flame. They wed themselves to these fallen ones as a mockery of the marriage of the Lamb. And indeed it is. It is the very antithesis of the Guru Chila relationship. There are millions of children of light who have idols among the fallen ones, whether in entertainment or in government or in religion. They do not understand or identify the wolves in sheep's clothing. Therefore, the holy Kumaras cannot increase the light in them to set them free. For the light they turn and give in sympathy to the fallen ones. There must come the cutting of the tie in order for the children of the light to receive greater light, the light which they need for the opening of the chakras and for the entering into the golden age. Thus you can understand the great need for shepherds. All of you can don the mantle of shepherd, if you will. It is a personal decision to take the very teachings already given, to learn them, to transmit them, to set life free. Very profound and important teaching for every light bearer on the planet, as we do see these very things that Lanter describes in our world today. The messenger has said that Saint Germain works with anyone on the planet who espouses freedom. And some of these characters, she says, are not always as refined as you would expect. So it's up to us to distinguish between the imperfect human and the heart that is committed to freedom and justice. In conclusion, in 1995, Saint Germain and Portia gave a dictation together, the two masters that embody freedom and justice and the hierarchs of the Aquarian age. <clears throat> Portia says, where is justice? Where is justice within the human consciousness? Where is the justice of the divine consciousness? <clears throat> there is truly no apparent justice in the earth. But if you look again, and if you have access in the retreats to the scroll of the, to, of the keeper of the scrolls, you'll discover that justice is the highest quality in the universe, the balance of all life, and the absolute accurate assessment of right, of wrong. The scales of justice from the divine hand, as I hold them, are never incorrect. Yet justice in the earth is lacking. The nations grieve at the injustice of the continents, of the governments, the corruption even of this government itself. Yet I tell you, beloved, when you salute the flame of divine justice and give gratitude unto that flame and all who uphold it, and then when you turn to go about your daily business and all that you do is just and fair, comforting, enlightening, and always just, you have a peace that can scarcely be understood. I then ask you to champion the cause of justice where the engines of justice have not correctly defined what is truth, what is right, and what is wrong. The more you call to the lords of karma individually and collectively, the more you sing to us, the more you will have in your own life a sense of justice and your Holy Christ self will be the deliverer of the justice in your world. 
And of course, we have this opportunity as we do our karmic board novena and sing to them daily. <clears throat> I have delivered to the messenger a direction concerning justice, for the messenger has called upon me to always remind her wherever there is an injustice that she might be there to correct it. If you ask for such gifts, beloved, these gifts will be given to you. And so the messenger is asked to know what is true justice in all matters, difficult matters that come to her attention. And before the altar of God, she does call for that perfect resolution of justice. And this we can do also. <clears throat> justice is not always accepted, Portia says. But I tell you, beloved, when it is accepted, you begin to know what you will allow yourself to do and what you will not allow yourself to do. Justice must be meted out and judgment also. And so it is written, know ye not that ye shall judge angels? This is the teaching of the Apostle Paul, if you know it not. The teaching is concerning fallen angels, beloved. And that single verse does tell you that Paul himself knew of the fallen angels and that they must be judged. And if they were to be judged, beloved, as Paul saw them moving among the people, wreaking havoc with justice and bringing upon nations all sense of injustice, then, beloved, you would see that it is entirely in order that in this day and hour, at the conclusion of the year, you, in the name of the seven archangels and the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood, call to the halls of divine justice. Call to me as a goddess of justice, that justice might be meted out and that these fallen angels whose time is up might be bound because you have given forth the judgment call. <clears throat> this judgment call written by our son, Jesus Christ, beloved, is for the end times and for the end of the year. Let them be bound. Let them be bound as the tares are bound and removed that the good wheat may prosper. This is your job and very few on the planet know it. I then sit on the board, the karmic board, and before this board and before the four and 20 elders, the fallen ones whom you have seen fit to bring to judgment come. And as you have been told before, they are profane, angry, mocking, jeering. They want no part of divine justice. I am a cosmic being, beloved, yet to deal with these individuals is not a pleasant assignment, yet it must be done. And long ago, I espoused the flame of divine justice. So in that flame, I am able to balance the flame of freedom of my consort, St. Germain. Blessed ones, I ask you to test yourselves as you go about your chores in the weeks ahead and observe and ask yourself, has everything that I have said been just and true? Have I amplified? Have I prevaricated? Have I rearranged the facts? All of this is not just. Justice is to speak the word of truth, to have compassion for those who have broken the law, and yet to compel them to come up higher and to embrace the path of chileship, of true divine justice. Therefore, it is just that you might be your brother's keeper. It is just that you might sow good seeds, good deeds each day on behalf of those who have less than you do. It is just that you give this teaching that you know to others, for they hunger after the righteousness of this teaching. It is just to be fair, to enter into and to settle disputes, to arbitrate, to assist those in staying out of court and settling rather than allowing the courts to deprive you of the true justice that is at hand. Justice is meat through the threefold flame, and the greater that flame and the greater the balance the more you will have the understanding, the understanding heart, and therefore the understanding of where divine justice must fall. Taking all things then into consideration, it is always best when engaging in justice to have the companion of justice, which is compassion. Compassion, beloved, may go only as low as the level of the heart. This is an important statement. Compassion may only go as low as the level of the heart. She says, where justice becomes injustice is where acts and states of consciousness fall below the level of the heart. Therefore, ye who have compassionate hearts, meet out God's justice. Yet remember 
that there is a quality of mercy that can heal many hearts. Therefore, beloved, I ask that in this year you remember me and call to that flame of justice once a day, saying in my name, I call in the fervor of my heart for the justice of beloved Portia to prevail in every heart throughout this earth. Let's repeat that together. I call in the fervor of my heart. I call in the fervor of my heart for the justice of beloved Portia to prevail in every heart throughout this earth. I call in the fervor of my heart for the justice of beloved Portia to prevail in every heart throughout this earth. I call in the fervor of my heart for this justice of beloved Portia to prevail in every heart throughout this earth. Immediately, she says, my legion shall go to work and you shall know change. I pray you shall not forget this call or my request. I bow to you out of the fire of justice in which I stand for the victory of all. Beloved Portia, we are most grateful to you and beloved Saint Germain for this powerful message that can transform our consciousness, can help us to accelerate to the level of the Christ so that we might bring all upon this planet up higher, up to that level of Christ, that true justice can be dispensed upon this planet. Teach us, tutor us as we go through our daily lives. And we remain committed to you and to our beloved Saint Germain, now and for always. In the name of the living Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Mm -hmm.